The weather here in the Northeast is starting to heat up, which is awesome. But before the summer temperatures come in, I wanted to make sure that I got in a sweater tutorial. And a tutorial on sweaters ultimately means that I'm doing a tutorial on pattern brushes and pattern swatches. Sweater designers usually make heavy use of pattern brushes, particularly for cables and pattern swatches for knit textures. So this week we're going to sketch a crew neck sweater and it has two cable brushes, two types of rib textures, two jersey stitches, and one knit texture fill. Now, because there's so much in this sweater, I'm gonna be breaking this up into two tutorials. So this week we're gonna be talking about how to create the rib textures as well as the first cable brush. And then next week, we're gonna be talking about the second cable brush, which is a little more complicated, as well as the novelty knit texture. There's a lot in both of these, so you wanna make sure you watch from the beginning to end and don't miss them. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, as well as the little notification bell so that you know when we post part two next week, as well as any other great videos. And hit the like button if you're excited about this tutorial. I know I am. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is draw the basic body of the sweater. This is a pretty simple silhouette. Most of the interest is in the different knit texture and stitches. So drawing the body is pretty simple. I'm making sure that the outer shape I create is joined at center front once I reflect it so that I have a closed shape. That's going to be helpful later when I create a clipping mask for the cable brushes. And make sure you pull a copy of the outer shape off to the side. This is going to be critical later on when you're finishing the sketch. Let's start by creating the ribs. For the rib on the sleeve and the bottom hem, I'm going to create a pattern fill for the rib. And if you're unfamiliar with how to create a rib as a pattern fill, check out this video on my channel. Once you have your rib texture, you need a shape to fill, and I'm going to create it with my favorite tool, Shape Builder. Draw a line where the rib and texture of the sleeve meet. Then highlight the sleeve, armhole, and the seam that separates the rib and the textured sleeve. Using the Shape Builder tool, click in each area to create two separate shapes, the sleeve and the cuff. Then switch back to the black arrow to get out of Shape Builder. Copy the cuff shape, paste in front, and remove the stroke color. Now fill with your rib texture. Adjust the size with the scale tool and the orientation with the rotate tool so it looks like it's proportional and on the correct grain. Remember when you're doing this that you wanna make sure you scale and rotate only the pattern, not the object. So make sure you choose those options when you use the scale and rotate tools. And these two videos are helpful to watch if you need more help on this. Use the same method when creating the rib on the bottom hem. And now let's move on to the rib at the neck. Since the neck rib curves, I'm going to use a dashed line. Draw a line similar to the shape of the neckline and place it in the center of the neck band. And make sure the edges of the line go a little past the edges of the band. Then increase the stroke weight until it's the same width as the neck band. Make it into a dashed line and adjust the dashes and gaps to create the look of the rib you want. For a finer rib, use smaller numbers and for a chunkier rib, which is what this sweater is, use larger numbers in the dash and gap boxes. Once you've adjusted the rib, you'll need to place it into the neck band. And before we can do that, we'll need to create a neck band shape. First, let's hide the rib texture just to get it out of the way. Select the dash line, then go to Object, Hide, Selection. Now, using the same method we used to create the cuff and bottom band, Draw a line to represent the edge of the rib neck band and use the shape builder to create a separate shape. We'll also need to do the same thing for the back neck band, so you may as well do it now. Now that you've created your shape, switch back to the black arrow, select the neck band, fill it with white, and remove the stroke. Next, unhide the rib by going to Object, show all 
and then put the rib inside the neckband by cutting it, selecting the neckband, and switching to draw inside mode. Then select edit, paste in place to get the rib inside the band. Repeat the first and last steps to create the rib texture and place it inside the back neckband. Let's move on to the first cable. To create it, I'm first going to drag two guides so that I can make sure the brush I'm about to create stays horizontal. Next, I'm going to draw a sort of stretched out S shape. Then select that shape and drag straight across to make the opposite side of the rope. It's very important that you keep this perfectly parallel to the other side. Both sides of the shape have to be the same in order for this to work. Once you drag the copy of your line, close the shape by connecting the points at the top and at the bottom of the shape. Lastly, fill the shape with white. To create the repeat, drag a copy of the shape. Again, make sure it's perfectly parallel and align it edge to edge with the first shape. To create the repeat, we'll make a definition box that goes from the center of one object to the center of the other. And to easily find the center of each object, select them, go to the attributes panel and choose the icon to show center. This will add a dot to the center of the selected objects. From here, you can draw your definition box using the smart guides to help you. But I prefer to drag physical guides to each object's center so that I ensure I get the repeat right. Pattern brush repeats go side to side, so the most important part to get right is the side to side repeat. Once you've dragged your guides, use the rectangle tool to create a definition box. The definition box is what will define the portion of the brush that will repeat over and over again along the line. Top to bottom, the rectangle needs to be at least as tall as the objects, but side to side, make sure you align the edge of the box with the guide you created. If necessary, remove any fill or stroke from the definition box and send the box to the back. Right mouse click and choose Arrange, Send to Back or go to Object, Arrange, Send to Back. Now, select all objects and drag them into the Brushes panel. When prompted, choose Pattern Brush. And in the Brush Options box, name the brush and change the colorization method if you like. Then press OK. Add this brush to your sketch by creating a line and then applying the brush. To adjust the size, change the stroke weight. And to create the second cable that's identical but facing the other direction, drag the brush to the new brush icon to duplicate it. Double click the new brush to go to the brush options box and then check the box flip across. Press OK and if necessary, select apply to strokes if you're already using the new brush on the page. So we're about halfway there. We still need to add the second cable brush and the novelty texture fill. So tune in next week, we'll finish the sketch and we'll even add some color. Should be a lot of fun. Thanks for watching, have a fantastic week and I'll see you next time.